Right, here we go. Um, in this question, we're given a curve C with the equation y equals x squared brackets x minus 6 plus 4 over x. And we're told that points P and Q lie on this curve, and we know their x coordinates. Now, the first thing is to show this that the length of PQ is the square root of 170. Now, if we're going to learn the length of the line between two points, we need to know the coordinates of those points, and that includes the y values, not just the x values. So we'll substitute the y val the x values into the equation that we've got uh, to find y. So for point P, we know that x equals 1. So if we substitute that in, we're going to get y is equal to 1 squared, and then in brackets, 1 minus 6, and plus 4 over 1. So that's going to work out as uh, 1 times minus 5 plus 4. And obviously that is minus 5 plus 4, which is minus 1. So the coordinates of P are 1 minus 1. And we'll repeat the process for Q. Now we're substituting in x equals 2. That's the x-coordinate at point Q. So y there is equal to 2 squared times 2 minus 6 plus 4 over 2. And that's obviously going to be 4 times minus 4 uh, plus 4 over 2, which is 2. So we have minus 16 um, plus the 2, uh, which is minus 14. So the coordinates of Q are going to be 2 minus 14. Okay, now that we know that, we can use the standard method, which is based on Pythagoras' theorem, um, to work out the, the distance PQ. So it's going to be the square root of, and we subtract the x values, 2 minus 1, square that. Subtract the y values, minus 14 minus minus 1, and square that. Um, because this is a show that, I'm not going to miss out any steps um, to leave myself open to losing marks here if I make a mistake. So 2 minus 1 squared is just 1. Minus 14 minus minus 1, that's minus 13. So I've got minus 13 squared. So in the brackets that becomes 1 plus 169, which we can see is going to be the square root of 170. So there we are, we've shown that the length of PQ is root 170. Right, let's move on. Part B. Um, show that the tangents to C at the points P and Q are parallel. Okay, so remind ourselves of the curve. Um, if we're dealing with the tangents, we need to know the gradient at these points. So looking at the equation, if we're going to differentiate it, we have to expand the brackets and rewrite that so that we can differentiate it. So expanding the brackets, we get x cubed minus 6x squared, and then 4 over x, we rewrite as 4x to the minus 1. And this is just so that we can differentiate, and that's what we need to do to find the gradient. So let's differentiate. Uh, dy by dx is going to be 3 lots of x squared minus 6 lots of what we get when we differentiate x squared, which is 2x. Um, oh, that's my cat moving around in the background. Plus 4 lots of, well, we bring the power down. That's minus 1 and decrease the power by 1. So minus x to the minus 2. Um, so I'll just tidy that up and write the minus 6 times 2x. Oh, I'm just going to have to go and get rid of my cat. Hang on. OK, the cat's been evicted. Uh, where were we? OK, so we've differentiated. So now we need to use dy by dx to work out um, uh, the gradient of these points. So at p, x equals 1. Let's sub that in. We're going to have 3 lots of 1 squared minus 12 lots of 1 minus 4 over 1 squared. Um, so if we work that out, uh, 3 get 3 minus 12 minus 4 and that comes to minus 13. Um, so let's do the same thing at Q. Hopefully we'll get the same answer because we want them to be parallel. Uh, dy by dx when we substitute in x equals 2 is going to be 3 lots of 2 squared minus 12 lots of 2 minus 4 over 2 squared. And so 3 lots of 2 squared, 3 times 4, that's 12 minus 12 times 2, so minus 24, and then we've got minus 4 over 4, so minus 1. And thankfully, again, that does come to minus 13. So we've shown that the gradient of the curve at these two points is minus 13, and therefore the gradient of the tangent at these two points is minus 13. So the tangents at P and Q are therefore parallel, which is what we were asked to show. OK, finally, let's have a look at part C. We want to find the equation of the normal to the curve C at point P. So like any 
question where we're asked for the equation of a curve, we need to know two things. We need to know, uh, first of all, a point that lies on the line, and secondly, we need to know the gradient. So if we can find these two things, we can easily work out the equation of the curve. Well, uh, this normal passes through P, because it's the normal at P, so it passes through 1 minus 1. Very good, we've got the point. Um, now for the gradient, well, we know that it's perpendicular to um, the curve C. Therefore, the gradient there is going to be the negative reciprocal of the gradient of the tangent. So, i.e., it's going to be um, minus 1 over minus 13. So the gradient of the line that we want is 1 13th. So I have the point, I have the gradient, I can do it either way. Um, you might choose y equals mx plus c and find c. I always do it this way. It's up to you. Um, but if you substitute in the y value at a point p, which is minus 1, the gradient of 1 13th, and the x value, which is 1, we just have to rearrange this into the required form. Easiest thing is to do that, times by 13. We get 13y. The minus minus 1 is a plus 1, so that becomes 13. And on the right, we're left with x minus 1. The only thing left to do is to move everything to one side. OK, they're already all integers, so that's fine. So if I subtract x, um, I get minus x plus 13y. And then I add the 1 to make plus 14, and that equals 0. And there we are. That's my answer. It's in the required form. Um, Note that there are alternatives that are just as valid. If I'd gathered everything on the right-hand side, all the terms would be reversed. I'd have plus x, I'd have minus 13y, and I'd have minus 14. So x minus 13y minus 14 equals 0 is an equally valid solution. Um, and this is always the case with these ones when it's gathered on one side. If you reverse all the signs, then the answer is just as good. So there we have it. That's our answer, and we're done. Okay. Here we're given the expression for a curve C, and first of all we're asked to differentiate, find dy by dx. So, term by term from the equation, let's find dy by dx. Starting with 4x, um, any constant times x gives you that constant when you differentiate. So 4, here we have 3, and then we differentiate the x part, so we bring the power down, so 3 over 2, and then we reduce the power by 1, so we have x to the power of half. And then finally, minus 2, lots of what we get when you differentiate x squared, which is 2x. And we'll tidy that up. OK, so 4 is 4. Uh, 3 times 3 over 2 is 9 over 2. And we'll leave that as x to the power of half. You can write root x, doesn't matter. Um, and minus 4x. There we go. That's the derivative. OK, b, we have to show that that particular point, 4, 8, lies on c. So that means that if we put x equals 4 into the equation for c, we should get uh, y equals 8. So let's try that. We'll substitute x equals 4 into that equation, and we'll see what we get. It's a show that, so we need to make sure we show all our working. So first of all, 4 times 4. Then the second term, 3 lots of 4 to the power 3 over 2. And then minus 2 lots of 4 squared. Um, simplifying that, that's obviously 16. Then we have 3 lots of, well, when we're doing powers that are fractions, first of all, look at the denominator in the fraction. So here it's 2, that means we're going to do the square root. So you've got the square root of 4. Um, and then the numerator of the fraction, in this case 3, is the power, so we're going to have to cube that. We could have cubed it and then square rooted it, but typically it's best to do the square root first. Um, then, of course, we've got 2 times 16. Uh, so carrying on, let's simplify everything as we go through. So 16 is 16. And then we've got 3 lots of, well, the square root of 4 is 2. Cube that is 8. So 3 times 8. And then 2 times 16 is 32. You can probably skip this next step. I'm just being very thorough because it's a show that question. So 16 plus 24 minus 32 equals 8 as required. So we make our conclusion that P lies on the line C. OK, next we are asked to show that the equation of the normal to C at point P is that. So let's examine this. Uh, Any time you want to find the equation of a line, you need a point and a gradient. So 
is at the point P, so straight away we know what point we're using. And the fact that it's normal to C at that point is going to give us the gradient. So it's at P. Um, so at P we know x equals 4. So if we substitute that into this equation uh, for dy by dx uh, at the top here, um, that should tell me what the gradient is of the tangent at P. So we've got 4 plus 9 over 2 lots of 4 to the power half, which is root 4, minus 4 times 4. And if we tidy that all up, uh, we've got 4, 9 over 2 times 2, so that's just plus 9, minus 16, and that all becomes simply minus 3. Now, of course, that is the gradient of the tangent at P, but we want the gradient of the normal. And the gradient of the normal compared to the tangent is, of course, the negative reciprocal. So in this case, we get a positive answer, and it's one third. So we now know uh, the gradient of our line, and we knew the point is point P. So put it all together, we can get the equation. This time around, I'm going to use uh, y equals mx plus c, that format. So y equals, in this case, one third x plus c, because I know my gradient is one third. And I know the point P uh, it is on that line. So that's when x equals 4 and y equals 8. Uh, let's just give ourselves a bit more room. So I substitute both of those into y equals 1 third x plus c. That will tell me what the plus c is. So 8 is 1 third lots of 4 plus c. Um, so I'll just rewrite that 8 is equal to, excuse me, 8 is equal to 4 thirds plus c. And then subtract 4 thirds. 8 is 24 thirds. So take away 4 thirds, you get 20 thirds. So c is 20 thirds or 20 over 3. And I have my equation now, y equals 1 third x plus c, so 1 third x plus 20 over 3. And from here, uh, remember this is a show that, it's a simple step to multiply the whole equation by 3, and we get the required form 3y equals x plus 20. Right, finally, part d. Um, we're told that the normal to C cuts the x-axis at point Q. Hmm, okay, so the normal to C, let's just remind ourselves, that's this line that we just found out. So 3y equals x plus 20. Point P, uh, we know that. That has coordinates 4, 8. Um, the point Q, uh, yeah, we don't know that yet. And if we look down in what we're asked, asked to do, we're asked to find the length of PQ. So we're definitely going to need to know the coordinates of Q. So Q is where this line cuts the x-axis. And any line cuts the x-axis when y is equal to 0. So we simply sub, sub y equals 0 into 3y equals x plus 20. So getting 0 equals x plus 20. Solve that to get x is minus 20. And that is the x-coordinate of Q, the y-coordinate, of course, being 0. So Q is the point minus 20, 0. So now we've got two points. We have the point 4, 8 and the point minus 20, 0. We're going to use um, the formula based on Pythagoras to work out the length. So we subtract the x-coordinates. So we've got 4 and minus 20. So we subtract those to find the difference in x-coordinates. And we square that. That's the horizontal leg of the triangle using Pythagoras. We subtract the y-values. So 8 minus 0. That gives me the vertical leg of my triangle. So I square that. And this is just simply a bit of arithmetic now. So I've got the square root of 24 squared uh, plus 8 squared. Can you do that without a calculator? This is a C1 paper, so you ought to be able to do this without a calculator. Uh, 24 squared is 576. 8 squared is, of course, 64. And when you add those together, you get a nice looking 640, which is great because you can straight away pick out uh, 64 as a square number that is a factor. So that is root 64 times root 10, which is of course 8 root 10. And that is our simplified third answer. And that's the end of the question. Right, in this question we're given a diagram of a cuboid and the dimensions from the question 2x, x and y. And we're told the surface area. Now the first thing we're asked to do is derive this expression for the volume. 
So first let's think about how we work out the volume of a cuboid, quite simply um, multiply the three dimensions together. So in this case uh, we've got y, x and 2x and we're just going to multiply them together. 2x multiplied by x multiplied by y and that gives me the expression 2x squared y. Now that isn't what I want yet but I'll put a pin in that and label it equation 1 and we'll come back to it. Now the key here is to use this fact okay, that the total surface area is 600. If you're not sure what to do, simply use that. So consider how we're going to work out the surface area. Well, you might start by doing the front and back faces, which are identical. So uh, they each have dimensions y and 2x. So it's two lots of 2x times y. Next, you could consider uh, the bottom and the top faces. They're both identical again. They have dimensions x and y. So two lots of x times y. And finally, uh, if we do the right and left sides, they both have dimensions x and 2x. So two lots of 2x times x. And we can simply tidy that expression up. Um, we get uh, 4xy plus another 2xy plus 4x squared. And that even simplifies further to give me 6xy plus 4x squared. So that's an expression for my service area, but I haven't actually used the fact yet that it equals 600. So let's put that. That equals 600. Okay, so now I've used that fact, I've got that down on paper as an equation. What next? Well, the problem that I have is if I look at the expression that I want for the volume, it is in terms of x alone. And the expression that I've currently got for volume has got y in it. Okay, but the expression that I got down here, the equation that I got has also got y in it. And I can use the second one <coughs> to get rid of y in the first one. So first, we rearrange this equation to make... Um, y the subject, first by subtracting 4x squared like this from both sides and next by simply dividing through by 6x. Uh, if we do that on the left we get y which is what we wanted 600 divided by 6x uh, minus 4x squared divided by 6x and I can then simplify that down cancelling the 600 and the 6 and in the next one the 4 6 cancels to 2 thirds and one of the x's cancels. So I've got myself a nice expression for y. What I want to do now is substitute that into my previous expression. So I'm going to substitute equation 2 into equation 1 and that will get rid of y for me. So v is simply 2x squared multiplied by the whole of this expression for y. So 100 over x minus 2 thirds x. Now uh, I'm going to expand the brackets and I'm not going to skip any steps because it's a show that question. So the first uh, pair give me 200x squared over x and then I've got uh, 2 times 2, so 4x uh, cubed divided by 3. And I'm almost at the expression I want. I can simply cancel the power of x in the first one to give me 200x minus 4x cubed over 3. And I recognise that that is the expression I was asked to show. So we're done. OK, the next bit, given that x can vary, use calculus to find the maximum value of v. And let's just remind ourselves what a v is. It's 200x minus 4x cubed over 3. So we need to find the derivative. OK, for a stationary point, you find the derivative. So uh, 200x gives me 200. Here um, I've got 4 thirds. And then when I differentiate x cubed, I get 3 x squared, reduce the power by 1. So when I tidy that, 200 um, minus, and the 3's cancel, so it's just minus 4x squared. Now, I want a maximum value. Remember that for any stationary point, the value of dy by dx is equal to 0. Well, in this case, dv by dx is equal to 0. So I can set my expression equal to 0. That gets me a method mark for that. And simply rearrange and solve. So add 4x squared to both sides divide by 4 and take the square root to get x. In this case x is the dimension of something so it's positive so I don't have to worry about plus or minus I can assume that it is positive. So that is the value of x at the maximum of v but it's not the maximum of v I have to put that value back into the equation for v. So substitute x equals 50 into my expression. So I've got uh, 200x 
which is 200 root 50, minus 4 thirds of x cubed, so 4 thirds of root 50 cubed. You can do this on the calculator now if you want, but um, I would simplify as follows. I would say root 50 cubed is 50 root 50, so 50 times 4 is 200. So we've got 200 over 3 root 50 for my second term there. And 200 take away 200 over 3 is uh, 400 over 3. So I've got 400 root 50 uh, over 3. Um, so that is my expression for the maximum volume, but it says to the nearest centimetre cube, so I don't need the exact value. I need to put this in my calculator and see what I get, which is that, and you can see that, that would round to 943 centimetres cubed to the nearest centimetre cubed. Okay, so that is the answer to part B. That is my uh, maximum. Typically, for questions like this, I'm now asked to show that it's a, it's a maximum to justify and to do that, you have to find the second derivative and consider the sign of it at this point. So I've got my expression up there for dv by dx. I simply need to differentiate that a second time. So the 200 gives me nothing. That gives me a 0. And then minus 4 times the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. So d2v by dx squared is minus 8x. There's a clue right there that it's minus uh, 8 times x, so it's always going to be negative, but to be thorough we substitute in our particular value of x. At this point x is root 50, so d2v by dx squared would be minus 8 lots of root 50. I don't need to evaluate that as a decimal, I just know that that is negative, um, so I can conclude therefore that uh, this is a local maximum point. And that's it. OK, in this question we have a lorry being driven at a steady speed of v kilometres per hour and this formula is for c, the total cost of the journey. We were, we were first asked for uh, the minimum value of c, or actually we were asked for the value of v when it's a minimum. So we're going to have to differentiate c um, and therefore we'll rewrite it because the first term needs to be written as a power of v. Um, so 1400 v to the minus 1 and 2 v over 7 doesn't need to be changed. So we can go ahead and differentiate that. We're differentiating with respect to v. So it's dc by dv. Here we have 1400 times, and then we're going to bring down the power, which is minus 1, and reduce the power by 1 to minus 2. Of course, the next term is just a constant times v, so that gives me the constant 2 sevenths. Um, I'll rewrite this as uh, minus 1400 over v squared for simplicity plus 2 sevenths. Now remember, whenever you want to find the stationary point maximum or minimum, the condition is that the first derivative is equal to 0. So in this case, dc by dv. So we'll put equals 0 over here next to our dc by dv and solve that. So first of all, I'm going to add the negative term to both sides so it moves over to the right. 2 sevenths is 1400 over v squared. And to bring up v squared in on the left-hand side, multiply by v squared. Also multiply by 7 to bring that up to the top on the right and divide by 2. So I get v squared is 7 times 1400 divided by 2. Uh, that simplifies quite nicely to a square number, 4900. So we can square root that to get v. Don't worry about the plus or minus because v is a speed in kilometers per hour. So we can take the positive. Um, and that's what we're after for, uh, the value of v. And so that's the answer to part A. OK, B, we're asked for the second derivative, and hence to verify that C is a minimum. OK, so I'll just rewrite out the first derivative um, in its simplest form as with a power of V, so V to the power of minus 2, um, plus 2 sevenths. And then we can go ahead and differentiate this the second time. So D2C by DV squared, uh, we have minus 1400, and then for the V to the minus 2, bring the minus 2 down, and reduce the power by 1 to minus 3, and of course the 2 sevenths gives me 0. If I tidy this up, minus times minus gives me a positive, so I've got 2800, and v to the minus 3 means over v cubed. Um, so now uh, I want to know that we've got a minimum when v equals 70, so the value of v that we've just found. So I have to substitute v equals 70 into that expression. If I do that, d2c by dv squared is equal to 2800 over 70 
cubed. Now I can see here that the numerator and denominator are both positive. I don't actually have to evaluate this, although you can. I can simply write here with confidence that that is greater than zero. It's positive. And if the second derivative is positive at a stationary point, we know that therefore we can conclude that it is a local minimum. All right, part C uh, just wants the minimum total cost. Now C is the total cost. So uh, we found a minimum point. We just have to find what the value of C is there. So when V equals 70. So we just need to take the formula for C, which I'll write out here. Uh, 1400 over V plus 2 sevenths V and substitute in V equals 70. Very simple. So 1400 over 70 plus 2 sevenths of 70. And you don't even need to calculate it for this one. So 1400 over 70 is 140 over 7. That's just 20. And 2 sevenths of 70 is 2 times 10, another 20. So the total cost of the journey C is equal to 40, and that is your answer. It's 40 pounds, but the units are not required because you want the value of C. And that's it. Right, in the C1 question, we're given a curve, y equals f of x, and we know a point that it passes through, and we know it's a derivative, we know f dash of x. And with that, we're first asked to use integration to find f of x. The question could be put just find f of x, but they've given us a clue, use integration. So let's integrate f dash of x to get f of x. So we're integrating 6x squared minus 10x minus 12 with respect to x. So term by term, we have 6, and then x squared integrates to x cubed over 3, uh, minus 10 lots of x squared over 2. So each time we integrate by increasing the power by 1 and dividing by the new power, and a constant just integrates to that constant times x, and plus c. Don't forget that. If you forget that, you're uh, stuffed. Okay, so let's just simplify that. 2x cubed minus 5x squared minus 12x plus c. That's my f of x. Uh, but there's a detail missing. I need c. But we know this point here. It passes through 5, 65. That means that in this notation, f of 5 is equal to 65. That's what's going to give me the value of C. Uh, so let's go ahead and work out F of 5. We substitute 5 into the expression we've got. 2 lots of 5 cubed minus 5 lots of 5 squared minus 12 lots of 5 uh, and, of course, plus the C. Now, I could put equals 65 at this stage. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to simplify it and then put equals 65 later on. So going through, we've got 2 lots of 125, minus 5 lots of 25, minus 60, and plus the C that's still there. Let's hurry up and do this. So 250, uh, minus 125, minus 60, plus C. So that is equal to uh, hmm, 65 plus C. So now I'm going to use the fact that we know that F of 5 equals 65. So this expression that I've got, I can just write equals 65 next to it. And that gives me a dead simple equation to solve. Subtract 65 from both sides. I get C equals 0. So I've now got the last bit of information I needed about f of x. I can write out um, my solution. f of x is equal to uh, 2x cubed minus 5x squared minus 12x. C is 0, so I need nothing else. Um, and that is the answer to part A. OK, part B, hence show that f of x is equal to that factorised expression. It's a show that, so don't leave anything out. I'm going to start with the expression that I've got from up there. f of x is 2x cubed minus 5x squared minus 12x. When you're factorising for a show that, you have to do it in steps. OK, and the easiest step to do first is to take x out. You can see from the answer that x comes out as a factor, and if I take x out, of each of my three terms. Inside the bracket I'm left with 2x squared minus 5x minus 12. And the next step, you don't actually have to do anything. We know what the answer is, um, but you could check that. If you weren't sure of your answer from part A, you could check it by expanding the brackets or just simply factorise what you've got. Um, but there's no working to show. So the middle step is vital, but the last one, um, there's no working. You just have to show the answer. Okay, finally, part C, we're asked to sketch 
the curve of C. And it asks for the detail of showing where C crosses the x-axis. That, of course, is when f of x equals 0, or normally y equals 0. So from my factorised expression, it gives me the three roots of the polynomial, effectively the three points where it crosses the x-axis. So x equals 0, minus 3 over 2, or 4. Um, next, for a sketch, I need to consider the general shape. This is a cubic, so it's got uh, a couple of options. Um, I know that it's got uh, the x term is 2x cubed. It has a positive x term with the 2 in front. That means it's going to be this sort of up, down, up shape from left to right. Once I know that, I know everything I need to sketch it. Draw myself some axes. Um, one approach is to mark on the places where it's going to cross, so as I'm doing here in red. And the trouble with that is that when you draw your nice smooth curve, it has to pass exactly through those. And that's a bit of a pain because you really want your curve to be nice and smooth. You want the shape to be correct. So what I prefer to do is just to kind of go for it freestyle. That one didn't quite work. Um, but when you get one that looks about right, um, then mark the points on. And that looks just about to scale. That That's minus 3 over 2, that's 0, and that's 4. Um, all the key features are there, so that'll do. And that's the answer to C at the end of the question. OK, next question. Here we have a curve C, uh, with equation y equals f of x. We're given the point that it passes through, and we're given its gradient function f dash of x, so the first derivative. And we want f of x. So we have to find this by integration. We know that f of x is simply the integral of f dash of x with respect to x. So we're going to integrate that expression, 3x squared minus 6. I'll rewrite 8 over x squared as 8x to the minus 2. And we integrate that with respect to x. So let's do that. 3 times x cubed over 3. Minus 6 simply gives me minus 6x when I integrate it. Then I've got minus 8 lots of x to the, well, I increase the power by 1 to minus 1 and divide by the new power, minus 1. We'll tidy that up in a minute, but don't forget you've got your plus c. Without that, you cannot proceed, really. Um, so uh, tidy it up, we get x cubed minus 6x, and here I've got a minus divided by a minus, so that's going to give me a plus. So I have plus, and then x to the minus 1 means that x is on the bottom, so we have 8 over x. And of course I've still got my plus c. So that is f of x, but the plus c is a problem, I can't leave that there. I'm going to use the fact that it passes through the point p um, to work out c. So when x equals 2, y equals 1, or in the language of this question, f of 2 is equal to 1. So I return to my expression I've just arrived at and do f of 2. f of 2 is 2 cubed minus 6 lots of 2 plus 8 divided by 2. I've still got my plus c. Now at this point I could put equals 1 because that's the condition I'm going to use, but uh, first I'm going to tidy it up. Uh, so that's 8 minus 12 uh, plus 4 plus c, which lo and behold uh, simplifies to just c. So f dash, uh, sorry, f of 2 is equal to c, but I'm going to use the fact now that I know that f of 2 equals 1. So this is f of 2. I can write equals 1, and actually straight away that gives me the value of c. I now know my function. f of x is equal to x cubed uh, minus 6x plus 8 over x. And I've now got my c, which is plus 1. So I can add that on the end. And that is the answer to part a. Right, part b. We are asked for the equation of the tangent to c at the point p. So let's examine what we need for this. It's a straight line. So for any straight line, we need two things. First of all, we need a point that it passes through. Well, I've got that, point P. We're given at the start, P has coordinates 2, 1. So that's a good start. I also need a gradient. Well, the gradient of a curve at any point is given by its gradient function, f dash of x. And we were given that at the start as well. So I'll use the expression for f dash of x that we were given before. Uh, there it is as a reminder. So I need to know what value that has at P. And at p, uh, the x value is equal to 2. So we work out f dash of 2 by substituting it in there. So 3 lots of 2 squared, minus 6, minus 8 over 2 squared. 
uh, that simply gives me 12 minus 6 minus 2, um, which is just 4. Um, so 4 is the value of the gradient of the curve at point P, and therefore that's also the gradient of the tangent to the curve at point P. So what have we got? Well, we've got a point that it passes through, 2, 1, and the gradient. And there's nothing simpler now. We know it's going to be the form y equals mx plus c, so let's use that method. I can write my curve, sorry, my line is going to be y equals 4x plus c, and I'll simply substitute in the point that I know it passes through. So x equals 2, y equals 1. Sub that into my equation. 1 is equal to 4 lots of 2 plus c, and solve for c. So 1 is 8 plus c, subtract the 8, c is minus 7. And that's it done, really. I'll write down my equation in the form required. y equals 4x minus 7. And that is the solution.